Across the vast wheat fields of Montana, a sound thundered, not from the sky, but from deep within the soil. It wasn't thunder, it was the Detroit Diesel 8Fi 71, a machine that didn't just produce power, it stirred emotion. A mechanical scream that made heads turn. The 1960s and 70s were an era when American farmers craved horsepower. And the 8V71 looked like the perfect answer. Compact, powerful, and easy to fix. It seemed destined to transform farming forever. But then, the truth began to unfold. Not everyone could tame this beast. And while some turned it into legend, others paid a heavy price. So, what really happened? After World War II, America wasn't just rising. It had become the epicenter of mechanical innovation. Tanks, warships, generators, they all proved one thing. Diesel was the future. And the industry knew it. Detroit Diesel, a division of General Motors, wasn't going to sit back. After building a reputation through wartime engines, they set their sights on something bold, an engine that was stronger, lighter, and more advanced than anything before it. In 1957, the 8V71 was born. The name sounds simple. 8V71 just stands for eight V-shaped cylinders, each displacing 71 cubic inches. But inside was a daring engineering philosophy, a two-stroke diesel, unlike anything farmers had ever used. Instead of the slow, traditional four-stroke rhythm, the 8V71 fired every time the piston rose, effectively doubling the power strokes. With a gear-driven roots blower, a kind of mechanical supercharger, the 8V71 screamed like a racehorse at full gallop. It was compact and far lighter than bulky engines of the time, yet could push out over 300 horsepower, an impressive figure back then. But Detroit's ambition didn't stop at engineering blueprints. They wanted to take the 8V71 somewhere unexpected into the fields of America. In the early 1970s, American agriculture was transforming. Fields were getting bigger, machines were growing heavier, and the pace of work was accelerating. Farmers began to realize their trusty old tractors just weren't cutting it anymore. So when they heard about an engine pushing over 300 horsepower, revving up to 2,100 RPM, compact and easy to fix, they couldn't look away. The Detroit Diesel 8V71 wasn't just an engine. It was a promise, a promise of unrelenting power. Unlike the heavy, slow, traditional diesels, the 8V71 felt like a wild horse, screaming, powerful, and full of fire. Its modular design, with individually removable heads, made repairs easier than ever, something farmhands with a wrench deeply appreciated. And parts? No more waiting weeks for specialty orders. Detroit diesel engines were common in trucks, and their components could be found in garages along every highway. It's no surprise that brands like Versatile and custom tractor builders in the Great Plains began outfitting their machines with the 8V71. Everything seemed set for a mechanical revolution in farming until the 8V71 was put to work in the real world. And that's when it happened. When the 8V71 powered tractors began hitting the dirt, people realized this engine didn't behave like anything farmers had seen before. Because the 8V71 wasn't slow and steady. It was a two-stroke diesel, a totally different breed from traditional four-stroke farm engines. In a two-stroke, every upward piston stroke meant combustion, double the power, higher RPM, and a scream like no other. But in return, it demanded constant airflow and fuel. Any interruption was dangerous. And the biggest problem 
it couldn't handle being lugged at low RPM under heavy load, something farm tractors do all the time. At low speeds, exhaust gases wouldn't clear, heat would build, pistons would burn, heads would crack. Some said it didn't break, it melted. Farmers weren't used to this. They'd throttle down, crawl through mud, and let the engine grunt. But try that with an 8V71, and disaster came fast. One day, it's screaming along happily. Next day, smoke, leaks, no compression. On spec sheets, the 8V71 was a marvel. Powerful, compact, easy to service. But those very features, so ideal on paper, became double-edged swords out in the realities of farm life. First, the Roots Blower, a gear-driven supercharger that continuously pumps air into the engine. In a two-stroke, this isn't optional, it's essential. Without forced airflow, exhaust gases can't be fully scavenged from the cylinder, leading to choking and extreme heat buildup. Next is the narrow RPM range. The engine only operated properly between 1800 and 2100 RPM. Stray outside that window, even slightly, and the cooling system struggles, exhaust lingers, and failures begin. The unit injector system is another brilliant yet picky feature. Each cylinder had its own injector, driven directly by the camshaft. Durable and mechanical, it didn't need electronics. But if it fell out of sync, tuning was no small task. Lastly, the wet liner design, each cylinder sleeve was water-cooled and individually replaceable. Ideal for rebuilds if maintained correctly. But if coolant gets contaminated or pressure is lost, damage happens quickly and badly. And unfortunately, when those engineering rules were ignored, the consequences didn't come in years, but in days. Very quickly, the technical quirks farmers had once ignored came back with a vengeance. Lugging, running slow under heavy load, was normal for traditional tractors. But for the 8V71, it was suicide. At low RPM, airflow dropped, exhaust gases stayed trapped, and temperatures soared. Pistons melted, heads cracked, and worse, crankshafts snapped. To many farmers, it felt like betrayal. They believed, if it's American, it must be tough. But the 8V71 wasn't a workhorse, it was a racehorse. And if you didn't handle it right, it would throw you off. Then came the fuel consumption, an eye-opener for many. At high RPM, the engine drank diesel like a long-haul truck, not a farm machine. For mid-sized farms during the fuel crisis-ridden 70s, that was a serious burden. And the noise, the mechanical scream, at 2,100 RPM, hour after hour, left operators drained. In open cabs, without ear protection, many just wanted to shut it off as soon as possible. But not everyone was disappointed with the 8V71. In the right hands, in the right setting, it became a powerful ally, not a liability. The secret was simple, right application, right operation. When kept at high, steady RPM with good cooling and constant load, the 8V71 was practically indestructible. The best proof? Legendary giants like the Big Bud, 525-50, and the Big Bud 747, icons of industrial farming in states like Montana, North Dakota, and parts of Canada. There, fields stretched for thousands of acres. Implements weighed tens of tons. Tractors ran for hours without stopping. In this steady load, high RPM, non-stop environment, the 8V71 didn't just survive, it thrived. Its modular design finally made sense. Blow ahead, replace just that one. No need to tear down the whole engine. Injector issue, pull it and swap. Done in under an hour. Worn liner, 
field serviceable. Large operations learn to care for the 8 V71 by the book. Keep the RPMs up, swap filters regularly, watch temps like a hawk. And from those who knew and loved this machine, a new journey began, no longer tied to the fields, but to passion and memory. Because the 8V71 wasn't just an engine, it was a sound, a feeling, a mechanical memory tied to an entire generation. And that's what brought it back to life in a very different way. As agriculture moved on to newer, cleaner, quieter engines, vintage tractor enthusiasts began a journey of their own. They weren't just restoring old machines, they were reviving the Detroit 8V71 through creative custom builds. From classic John Deere's to Old Case and Massey Ferguson models, many machines were reborn with the high-pitched roar of the screaming Jimmy. For some, it was about raw power, but for many, it was simply about hearing the sound of their childhood again. At vintage tractor shows, the howl of the 8V71 echoes across fields of silent engines, reminding us that some machines never die as long as someone remembers them. And what's beautiful is this. The 8V71 didn't need to win in the marketplace. It didn't need flashy ads. It won in the hearts of those who understood it. And from those passionate revivals, a bigger question emerged. Was the 8V71 truly a failure or simply misunderstood? Because when you really look back, the 8V71 wasn't weak, it wasn't bad, and it certainly wasn't outdated. It was simply a machine that needed the right place, the right hands, and the right moment. The Detroit Diesel 8V71 failed in farming not because it was flawed, but because it wasn't meant to be a farm tool. It was an industrial engine with the muscle and temperament of a military truck, and when placed where it didn't belong, it responded the only way a machine knows how, by screaming, overheating, and melting down. But from that failure came a lesson. Horsepower is never the whole story. A great engine isn't just powerful. It must be appropriate, durable, serviceable, and forgiving in the hands of everyday operators. Still, one thing's undeniable. The 8V71 created a sound, a feeling, a mechanical memory that can't be replaced. To those who lived with it, the 8V71 wasn't just a machine, it was a personality, a snapshot of American mechanical attitude wrapped in eight cylinders and a scream that stopped fields in their tracks. It may not have been the future of farming, but it is forever part of its past. But what about you? Have you ever heard the iconic scream of an 8V71 in real life? Have you driven one, worked on one, or maybe been frustrated by one? Share your stories, memories, or even just your thoughts about the screaming Jimmy down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you because behind every engine sound, there's a person who remembers it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share it with someone who loves machines just like you do. And who knows, in the next video, we just might fire up another legend.